back and we are moving into uh, our next conversation for this morning where we are joined by a familiar face who's uh, here in a different capacity for today. Uh, we have uh, Frank Tench who is the teacher and principal at Friends Boys School. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Tench. Good morning, Marlene, and good morning, Gavin. You know, my first inclination is to ask you about the weather. <laughs> Yes, understood. <laughs> uh, but it's good to see you. And uh, of course, this is a wonderful opportunity to find out about this institution uh, that you have been working with. So tell us about uh, Belize's Friends Boys School. OK, this school um, goes back to 1993 when it was um, when it was formed as a um, school run by Quakers uh, under the, the, the guidance of um, Miss Sadie Vernon. She's now departed. And she was instrumental in forming this school. And uh, her work, her work uh, uh, laid the, the groundwork for the school uh, back then. Um, in those days, the school was a school for primarily for boys, and it uh, provided um, uh, remedial uh, studies and training for youngsters who, for one reason or other, could not uh, complete their primary school education. Um, over the years, the school has become co-ed, and I think that goes back to since 2009, so it's now co-educational. And it has also moved on from the original location on 4 Alembi Street to the current location on um, the Central American Boulevard. It, it has a much bigger um, building and staffing has also increased over, over the last um, two to three years. Mm -hmm. uh, still with the focus on, on providing um, uh, uh, education for youngsters who have difficulties in completing their primary school education. So you know, key, the very key part is here, while it's still called a boys' school, it's now co-ed. Um, mm -hmm. And you also offer specialized education. So you're saying for people, for children who've had difficulty finishing school, is it financial challenges? Is it uh, because they fell too far behind and so you're offering remedial education? What, what seems to be the, the situation for most of the children? Um, each student brings to the school a variety of um, issues. In many, in many cases, the, 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 the issue is financial. Um, in some in instances, the, the issue is, is a, a poor academics. The students have not been able to, to complete their standard six education. And in addition to that, many of these students bring to, to the school um, some societal, um, what they call baggages. So we have to assess each student on where that student is, what the student's uh, um, deficiencies in, 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 in completing their standard six education, what, the, what are their um, um, social problems or ills, it could be family, um, dysfunctional family backgrounds, um, a variety of issues. So, so each student comes with a with with a different um, what I call a set of baggages. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we have to. Some students, it's just um, pure and simple. They weren't. They were slow learners. Couldn't couldn't complete the standard six education in the required time. So. Uh, and the, the school they were at would not accept them back into the system. Yeah. So they're, they're left at the mercy of the, um, the ills of society. And, and we, we, we look at the school as a, a way of providing a safety net for preventing such youngsters from falling through the cracks. Yeah. And um, so I, can, I can talk. Yeah. yeah? Oh, I was going to ask, what are some of the ways in which, um, you know, given that some, a lot of the students are um, facing a lot of these difficulties, how do we ensure, uh, you know, that, that you do provide, um, you know, the, 
level of whatever it is that they need and how do we ensure that they do um, end up be, you know, successfully completing um, you know, the program? Okay, first, like I said, first we look at where the student is with their academics, with their, with their social background, family background. And like at the start of this uh, next school year in, in August, we're going to do it. You, you have, I think, a very unique program um, because w the way things are currently set up in our education system, mandatory education is only until you're 14. What I think a lot of people don't know is that after you're 14, the primary schools don't necessarily have to take you back. Um, so That's you're me. either fully equipped to move on to, second, to, to a secondary school or maybe you just won't complete it. So mm -hmm. schools like Friends Boys School helps to fill that gap. So a child who's maybe exactly. 14 exactly. and didn't learn the necessary skills or didn't um, successfully complete primary school can go to your institution and get themselves ready to get back on an educational path. It's, it's, a, it's a very worthwhile um, uh, cause that you guys have and, and very necessary to help to mitigate what would be a, a really tough life if you don't have just the minimum primary school degree. Um, mm -hmm. How do you manage? I mean, because if someone's come already coming from a financially strained situation, you're talking about tuition costs and, and being able to manage a school um, in, in real tough circumstances. So how does the school provide? Okay, I, I just want to um, let's see if I can show this uh, to you guys here. Um, uh, I just want to show, see if I could show you uh, an idea um, of the, the tuition cost for our school. We, we consider our tuition rates very affordable. And, um, oh, okay, <laughs> I realize I can't show my screen. Anyway, um, we, we, we make our rates very affordable. For instance, um, a total um, cost for a school year for any one student would be in the range of 300 to $350 for the whole school year. After you've paid uh, uh, fees for, say, application, registration, uniform, and uh, monthly monthly um, payments would be thirty dollars per month. That comes up to three hundred and fifty dollars for the whole school year. Yeah. If you've paid all that, you have no other fees to pay. We provide the textbook and the school supplies, uh, pencils, notebooks, uh, uh, pens. We provide everything else, and of course, our school is also a part of the government's um, um, lunch program. Yeah. We also provide our own um, snacks for the students. So all of that is taken care of by the school. So we pride ourselves on, on, on making our school rates affordable. Yeah. Um, How many students do you get per year? Sorry? How many students do you normally get per year? Okay. Um, this past school year, we had an enrollment of uh, 15 students. That's at the low end of um, enrollment. Um, I've seen in previous years we've had enrollment as high as um, 30 students. Okay. And, 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 and so that, that, that would be at the high end. Um, part of our, our, our um, media campaign right now is to try and encourage a bigger enrollment of students for the coming school year. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're, we're quite, we're quite um, comfortable with the, the small enrollment because it allows us to give the students that individual attention, which you probably would not be able to do with a bigger enrollment. Mm -hmm. But coming back to what I was saying, we, we really try to make our rates affordable. Yeah. And another part of our strategy, we, uh, we have consciously targeted the south side of, our, of, of the city as the target market for, for the students because that's where we think the masses of the students with um, these um, baggages, as I mentioned, come from. So, so that is again another, another of our focus, our geographical location. When we were at the 
original building on Allenby Street. Um, we had a search out for a bigger building and an expansion of the school's um, mission and, and vision. And we could have easily found the building on the north side of the city that suited our needs, but we, we deliberately shied away from that because we figured that our target audience was the south side of Belize City. So these are all things that played together in, in uh, our development over the last uh, five years or so. Yeah. And can you um, also maybe tell us a little bit about your staff and teachers and you know how it is that they manage to um, work with students to ensure success in spite of all the, um, whatever difficulties and or the baggages as, as you call them um, they may be um, coming with. Okay, we. It is a challenge. <laughs> I won't deny that there, there, there's, there's. We are after, we are dealing with students who come who come with a variety of challenges, and and um, uh, I think I don't have my, my other teacher with me, but um, she will tell you that, and and I can attest to it as well. We have students who who have run-ins with the the law or who have had to um, call the police in on occasions to deal with students. Maybe we found a student with a switchblade on his, his person, and that's considered a serious offense. We have students um, who have high absenteeism, and, and when you try to get to the root of that absenteeism, there are a variety of reasons why that happens. Um, then there are students who just come to a school because they just literally were unable to complete their standard six education. And, and whereas other schools would not accept that student back, we will take that student and help him or her to, to complete their primary school education. But it, it is a challenge. I must mention that we are also a church-based school. The, the parent company that, that, that uh, owns the school is um, called Friends United Meeting. Mm -hmm. The group of friends, or often called Quakers, also provide the students with that um, holistic um, training or teaching to try and create um, young men and women with as rounded as possible an education. So it's more, it's more than just education, because we have a pastor who is also a part of the uh, uh, school community. He provides um, daily morning devotions for the students. Yeah. And uh, we have a director who is also um, trained in, in, in pastoral ministry. So she also uh, provides that level of um, uh, guidance for the student. So you have the academics we're looking at. We have the, the um, teachers who are, are, are involved in that, and then you have the pastor who is also there to provide that um, social guidance. Yeah. Our staff is very small. Um, I am the principal. Uh, I also teach one course in the, in the school. I teach a science program. My other teacher does the other courses, mathematics, uh, um, language arts, and social studies. And uh, we have a, a retired school teacher, Mrs. Greta Park, she does the remedial work for the students in Standard 5. Yeah. So in all, it's about four or five of us on staff. Now, uh, you are looking towards the new school year, and uh, tell us a bit about uh, how you guys are going to be adapting for uh, the pandemic reality. Mm -hmm. Well, we, 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 um, Went downhill just like other schools across the country when 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 the, the the state of emergency and the closure of schools occurred on March 20th, and we countered that by uh, providing students with packages. We gave them packages to take home to do their schoolwork. We also issued the students with um, cell phones so that staff and and directors were able to stay in touch with the students during the pandemic. Um, our parent company um, also provided a special COVID fund, which allowed us to provide the students with weekly food packages um, during the pandemic. Uh, we've reduced that that um, uh, distribution of packages from yeah. weekly to twice weekly. Today we're doing our last for this month before uh, 
we take a break in the month of July. Yeah. Um, and we are um, conscious of all the, 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 the COVID uh, precaution measures that the Ministry of Education has uh, asked all schools to abide with. We think with the small enrollment that our school has, we'll be able to cope with things like social distances. We are well equipped with hand washing stations and each classroom is equipped with a properly functioning toilet. Yeah. Um, and um, I think the, the challenge is going to ensure that the students um, abide by that that distancing protocol and mm -hmm. wearing their face mask. Face mask. Yeah. Um, um, I must say, these students can be very challenging in that they, they will always push the envelope and tend to want to um, flout the laws or rules of the school. So we, we, we I definitely see that as a challenge going forward. But nevertheless, I think we, with all the measures that the Ministry of Education has imposed on um, uh, schools going forward for the new school year, I think we'll be able to cope. And we've also mentioned it to parents as well. And we will repeat it again come when school opens in August. So let's, um, we know this morning you wanted to let people know that uh, you are currently accepting applications for the upcoming school year. And I, we do have your PowerPoint, so we can put up the, the pricing um, so people can understand where the money goes. You said the yearly cost is about $350, but that works out to about $30 a month um, for the cost, the, the tuition. And then the tuition other fees. is thirty dollars a month. Yeah, yeah, monthly tuition is thirty dollars a month, and for ten months that's three hundred dollars. Yeah, and then the other costs and are uniforms and stuff like uniform, that. Uniform. Yeah. yeah, application fee registration, and once you've paid that, yeah. well, it would probably be a little more than three hundred and fifty because um, one uniform shirt or, or pants is twenty dollars, and, and, and if you want yeah. more than one, say say a student wants a set of three three sets of pants and shirts, that's that's sixty. That's about sixty dollars, yeah. So it's going to be a, a little higher, but but um, we we um, we definitely pride ourselves on keeping rates affordable compared yeah. to the other primary schools. So tell us about how people register. Um. Okay, the office is open um, right now on Mondays and Tuesday mornings, but we'll take a break uh, during the month of July. But nevertheless. Um, you can reach um, the administrative assistant by calling 604-2973 and to arrange an appointment for, for, for you to meet with, with the administration um, during the month of July. Um, we, we plan to be back at school in early August to get ready for the new school year and we'll be open half day every day from Monday to Friday and that's an opportunity again for parents and students to drop in and okay. get registered. Right. And and we, even after school opens, uh, uh, the ministry's di directive is that schools open August 10th. We're going to open on August 17th. But we've had applications and parents coming in as late as uh, September, October, to get their, their son or daughter registered in the school. So we don't have a, we don't have a cutoff date on that, that registration. Uh, deadline, but the earlier you get your your sons or daughters registered, yeah. the better it is. Yeah. All right. And your location? We are located at thirty four twenty eight Central American Boulevard. I think I put a sent you all a picture of yeah. the, what our building looks like. It's, it's all the way at the end of Boulevard near the port, right? Exactly. Yeah. You drive or walk as if though you're headed towards the port uh, compound, and it's the second building on from the corner on your left uh, before you turn into the port or before you turn into Caesar Ridge Road. Yeah. If you come from Caesar Ridge Road and you turn, make a right where the second building from the corner. It's not hard to find. Uh, and that picture uh, is, is, is very graphic. It's, uh, yeah. it's a huge building. And if and viewers... And if viewers who are watching want to consider sponsoring one of the students, maybe offering a scholarship, um, you know, things are tight, but some people still feel, want to help. Um, oh. how, how do they get in touch or who do they get in touch with if they want to sponsor a child? Just, just like, just like um, registering your, your sons or daughters, uh, contact, 
contact the administrative assistant. We have a school number, which is 2270449. But wow. as, like I said, after, after today, that office number will be closed. But call the secretary or I can call my number 6102816 and put your request to us. And um, in fact, in truth and fact, we've had we've had sponsors who have done that same thing. Yeah. They felt like they needed to sponsor this young man and young woman's education. And they have um, willingly um, funded that student's education. And we have success stories to, to talk about of students who have completed education through sponsorship. Yeah. Uh, you have students who maybe their mother has passed away or father has passed away, yeah. or they're growing up with, 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 with siblings uh, or, or other relatives and a sponsor chimes in and says, I want to I want to sponsor this student's education. And when they sponsor they 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 pay the whole the whole thing for the whole school year. And and when we have social function fundraising functions, they they so willingly contribute yeah. to the school. So that's a part of our um, that's a part of our um, um, mission uh, uh, with the school. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. I think one that people can know if they do have a child at home who's not completed primary school or is not able to return to primary school, that they can send them to a friend's boys' school. It's a co-ed school. Um, <laughs> And that uh, your child can be possi can possibly go back to um, complete that friends and move into secondary or prepare to take PSE and then uh, continue on from there as well. Uh, right. The most important thing is that you're offering an option for them to stay on that educational path. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Prevent, prevent that. Prevent youngsters from falling through the cracks. Definitely. Absolutely. Great work there, Mr. Tension. We do hope uh, that uh, you are able to uh, get the ball rolling for this year, get some um, more people signed up with the school, and we do hope that some people watching will consider sponsoring um, some of these children as well. Yes, yes, of course, of course. All right. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Oh, very welcome, very welcome. All right.